Hi and welcome to Stamping with Linda, your cardiologist since 1997, helping you create cards from the heart. Today we are going to talk about the Simply Pressed Clay and the molds that go with it. I need to confess that I have had this product for over two months, was reluctant to play with it because I kept hearing reports that you needed rubber gloves, you needed to put the molds in the freezer, and I thought, you know what, that's just not my thing. Um, but. Mary Ellen Stites um, posted um, some great tips on our Stampin' Connection, which is an exclusive um, website for Stampin' Up! demonstrators. And she had some great shares, and it made me go in and play with this. So, anyways, you need to just pull a little bit out. It is says that there's only um, 2.4 ounces, but it is very... Um, lightweight um, so you get a lot of the clay and I'm just going to take a piece of clay and just play with it kind of feels like taffy or play-doh the secret that Mary Ellen shared was that it's kind of wet so you really need to let it dry out a little bit um, it helps with the molds and something else when they were talking about using gloves it was because they were adding reinker to this white clay to make it a different color. Well, if you put your reinker in a little tunnel like that and then just put it in a Ziploc bag, then you can knead this color into your clay and not have to go get rubber gloves. Something else, since you use this color, I'm using the Daffodil Delight, in the bag you can just store your clay once you have colored it in this bag. So I have done this with the cantaloupe, Chris cantaloupe, and also with the brown sugar. So I've got the yellow. Again, it's best once it's kneaded good. And you can take it out of the bag once you've got the color mixed well and roll it together. Let's see if I've got that. I think that's mixed well. But again, I'm not going to use this color. Again, I'm not getting it on my hands because I had kneaded most of it in with the clay. And you just want to work that back and forth. Before I would use that in my molds, I would let it air dry a little bit for it to get a little bit stiffer. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put that aside and I'm going to come in with my Chris cantaloupe that I have already used. And another secret is that you don't want to put too much clay in your mold. If your, your molds are small and if you overlap them a lot, then they're harder to get your mold or flower out, but Mary Ellen shared that she took her embossing buddy and just dabbed in those flowers like so. So you can see I've got a lot of dust going on there. I'm going to go ahead and press my clay in. I need just a little bit more. Again, less is better. So I'm going to make sure I press that in well. And then you just want to bend that around, make sure it's pressed in well, and then you're just going to pop it out like so. So again, some um, of the videos out there were talking about press, putting them in the freezer. Well, my freezer is nowhere near my stamp room. So this works better for me using the, the embossing buddy. You just have to go patiently, not pull too much. And if it does have a tip, you just kind of fold it. It does need some time to dry, and I have found that if I mold my flower, then I have more of a petal look um, to it. Another way um, to dust your flowers is with our dazzling details. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to cover that mold with the dazzling details. 
I'm going to go in with the same Crips cantaloupe and press that into my mold. So secret is make sure that you let your clay dry out a little bit and then to dust the molds. So you see that's coming out. Now with the dazzling details, I like it because then I have got my glitter already on it. So there I've got my flower. You can see the the dazzle I'm hoping on the video. Um, I did try to use embossing powder and then heat it. It did not work well because as it dried the embossing powder went into the clay and didn't work well. But I found that after it had dried completely, it takes about an hour for these to dry so you just want to make a bunch of them, set them aside. But I did go in and just spritz a little um, water on there and put embossing powder on that so I've got a gold flower. I think that will be pretty for a 50th wedding anniversary card. These, once they are dry, they feel like uh, styrofoam, very lightweight. This one I used the, the baked brown sugar and then I took the soft suede marker, just did the center and the tips. Um, here's one that is done with a strawberry. Um, slush and I used the aqua painter in the reinker um, and just did the tips of it. This one I did completely so solid so it was a white flower and then I just colored it. Um, here is the peach plain or peach cantaloupe um, plain but I do have a white one and I want to show you that you can just go in with your stamp and write markers and just highlight the edges. I'm going to go ahead and do a little more in the center there and just run my marker around like so. So then I've still got the white flower with the purple tip. You can do this with some of the clay that you have colored. I think the best thing is just to play with the flowers and then go back in and use them as an embellishment. They are very lightweight, like I said, they feel like a styrofoam or a fun foam um, material. So hope you've enjoyed today's tip with What's Up with Stampin' Up! series and that you join me on Tuesday for my Creative Fold series. Thanks for joining me.